stream, it'll just pick back up. That is bizarre. Okay, I'm looking. Let's see. Yeah, it's show, it's hey, we're back. Now it's black markets. A whole new meaning to live stream. <laughs> hey, you're not kidding, John. Hey, are we back? No. Well, it may be. It says we are. Okay, hey, everybody. It's running your beginning. I think we're on. I mean, according to this, yes, we are on. Refresh your page, Dina. Y'all. Oh, oh, my goodness. Gracious, wow. alive. Hold on. Let me find the... There we are. We're back. We're back. Is hey, everybody. okay? They're saying... Thanks yeah. to my crew. Thanks to my crew. Mm -hmm. Sweet Colleen, sweet Dina, sweet Philip. They went in there. They went into overdrive. Oh my gosh, do we still have our notes? What we're going to talk about? <laughs> yes, somewhere. I'm glad y'all hung in here. Let's see hey, here Becky, you're, you are back. Yes, <laughs> Becky, we're back. Hello. I had something I was going to do. I'm oh, sure glad you're back. back. Thank you, Dana. Well, if it'll let me put you up there, Dana. And my computer it didn't crash it. Isn't that great? <sighs> Praise that the great. Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Well, let's sing something, y'all. Uh -huh. What can we sing? After that. <laughs> After that. Yeah, debacle. Breath. Flying back to Texas. <laughs> hey, Andrew G Gash just texted me. He said, I'm flying back to Texas with a can of Scotch Guard. Oh, God. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> hey, Andrew. Yes, can y'all hear good? Oh. Well, I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over. Sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. Just keep falling in love with Him over and over and over and over again. I, when I first fell, that's not, that's that's that Gaither song. I'm hearing some static. Okay, y'all, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get right on over there to um, I'll turn Phil's mic up, someone says. I'm hearing staticky, staticky water noises. Can y'all hear that out there in La La Land? Oh, Scott, we might need your Scotch guard. Oh, no. Well, let's listen. Okay, we're going to watch this video, and we will be back. Y'all, uh, Susan Norwood, she said she didn't know what she missed. Well, we crashed, Susan. I threw my water into everything, and I think I hear water noises. But anyway, here we go. All right, my dear friend Phil Waldrop, here you go. Phil, <laughs> I have known you since probably, what, 19, in the early 80s we met? We did. We met when you came as part of a, a traveling team, and you came to a church in Cherokee, Alabama, Nobody knew who you were. In fact, nobody had even heard of Liberty Baptist College. But I think they could get you guys cheap, so they got you to come to a youth revival. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was Charles Hughes, David Musselman. Now, were you in the youth group? No. The pastor of the church was a good friend, and he invited me to come over and just to kind of see how you guys were doing it. And so I did. I went over and met you. And, of course, we didn't have no clue that years later we'd be friends. And David Musselman, I just remember he was a phenomenal pianist. Oh, he is It just still, was incredible. It was a great still. time. And then years later, you came to some of our, when we were both still doing youth events, and you came to those at a place called Shaco Springs. And so, you know, and just from then, been a good friend, and now you come to our Women of Joy and Celebrators, and oh, it's just always fun. Tell everybody that. who's watching who's never heard of Women of Joy, I, and mm -hmm. there may be women out there. Listen, and I, a lot of women watch my Mondays with Mark, I've heard. Mm -hmm. So tell them about the Women of Joy and the Celebrators. Well, we do several conferences, but the, the one that we love is Women of Joy, and it is a large gathering of Christian women from all denominations, 
and they come together. We have great speakers. We have people like Mark Lowry. We have wonderful musicians. And it is a weekend focused on Jesus, a weekend of praise, a weekend of worship. And women leave there encouraged. And they can find out more about that by going to womenofjoy.org, womenofjoy.org. And it'll show you all the places are going to be, who's going to be with us. They're going to be speakers and musicians and comedians that you know. And then every year we do one week in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, called Celebrators. And it's for older adults. We don't call them senior adults. And it is one of the most fun (laughs) things I do. Oh, well, it's true. Because they love to laugh, you know. They're not really senior adults because nobody wants to be a senior adult anymore. <laughs> so we, we find out even though there's several thousands there, uh, w- they all drove the bus for the one senior adult who's there. That's what they tell us because nobody wants to be an older adult. But I tell right. people, they have as much fun as youth, young people in a youth group. They just all go to bed. <laughs> That's what I like. They all go to bed and they don't tear stuff up. No, you know, they don't. They yeah. don't. I, well, you know, I've noticed since I turned sixty-one, around sixty, about ten o'clock is my limit. I'm I'm ready to hit the sack about ten. But let's talk about your book. Uh, You've got yeah. a brand new book coming out, and uh, it's called Betrayal. Correct? Beyond betrayal. Beyond betrayal. And, and it's a story because you know when we do conferences, and I sit down and I talk to women and senior adults and men. I began to hear their, really their heart cry. And a lot of times today in the Christian world, there are a lot of people who are hurting and they don't feel the comfort to tell people the pain that they're feeling. And so I began to listen and I realized that unforgiveness and betrayal is a lot of pain with people. And we start listening to preachers or teachers who are teaching biblical truth but then we start making conclusions that aren't biblical. For example, people always would say, well, if you really forgive somebody, you forget all about it. And I understand what they mean, but it's not true. And so what I wanted to do is I wrote about experience from my own life early in my ministry, where I experienced a very deep betrayal from a colleague. And for 20 years, I did not realize how that affected every relationship in my life. And so finally, it was my oldest daughter and my wife and others who said, why don't you sit down and write about not just the experience? The book is not a a biographical uh, sketch of that experience, although I talk about it. But it is about how you process that pain to get to the other side. And what I want to give people when I sit down and wrote Beyond Betrayal is it gives them hope and it gives them Uh, It lets them see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I tell them, you don't get there in 24 hours. You're not going to get there in a week. It is a process. But if you will process it biblically and correctly, and with the help of letting the right people speak into your life, you can get to the other side. And as I say at the very beginning, once again, you'll hear the birds singing and the sun is shining and life is good. How long did it take you to get through yours from beginning to end? Well, is it over? To I say end, is I, it ended? Well, I think, I think you do reach a point where you're able to go on, you get beyond it. I don't think it affects me. And when it does, I have people who can speak into my life and say, okay, I know you're having a little trouble trusting this person, but do you think it's because you've been betrayed? And that's one of the, the, the sad effects of being betrayed is you suddenly, because here's what happens when you're betrayed, Mark. People have a tendency to think, how could I have been so stupid? Yeah. Because you know when you've been betrayed, whatever the betrayal is, other people come around and say to you, hey, you know, I saw that all along. I knew or he was not honest or she was not honest. Then you feel like, why didn't you tell me? Right. And so it, you it, it, to process those feelings, so you have a tendency to guard your heart. But I want people to know, if you build a wall big enough to uh, keep people out, you build a wall big enough to keep people out. And the meaning is, if you try to keep out the pain, you also keep out the love. Because one of the early things I discovered was if you think about betrayal, the level of pain you experience is in direct proportion to the amount of love and trust you had for that person. So if you were betrayed by your spouse, if you were betrayed by a business partner or whatever the case may be, 
That's the level of your pain. And the good thing is, even people who've read the manuscript before, uh, some of them are rather well-known people, have come back to me and said, how did you know what I was going through? And I said, I didn't. But they talked about the simple, practical steps that I give people to help them to process it and to get to the other side. Wow. Well, that's good. I've never seen a book, I mean, that I'm aware of about that subject. In fact, when you sent me the what do they call it in the book world? In the CD world, it's a pre-release, but you sent me the- Same thing, a yeah, galley. Pre, yeah, mm -hmm. the, what, yeah, that of the book, and I was mm -hmm. reading it, and you go into detail about the person who betrayed you, which I was very grateful for, because mm -hmm. I wanted to hear, you know? I mean, it's one thing to have a formula, but if there's no story, that kind of thing, you need a story to back up, you know, sure. to prove that you really made it through it. I don't know that, I mean, I'm sure I've been betrayed, but I think, when you said they got a matter, you know, like if it's a spouse, it hurts more. If it's sure. a father, uh, mm -hmm. it hurts more. But um, uh, like I always say when, when I'm on the road, because I'm not a very good driver, you know. Mm -hmm. In fact, I tell everybody the only, the only time I'm ever allowed to drive is if I'm the only one in the car. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, I, you know, I, don't, I get, you know, flipped off mm -hmm. occasionally. Right. And one day I just decided, you know what, next time someone flips me off, I'm going to roll down my window and say, you know, that would really hurt if you mattered. <laughs> but and I'm that's not true. That. But, you that's know, the true. truth is, why do we let someone who we don't even know mm -hmm. matter? Because mm -hmm. you get flipped off, you get mad, right? That sure. causes road rage. Sure. And, but, yeah, but they don't matter. You'll never right. see them again. <laughs> and they don't matter in the big scheme of your life. Right. But when it's a spouse... When it's a mm -hmm. parent or a child mm -hmm. or a brother or a business associate, a business. Oh, one of the, I, I would tell you one of the betrayals that I discovered when I started interviewing people is how people as a group have been betrayed. Think about a pastor who maybe did something, you know, who molested a child. Uh, the whole church was betrayed. Obviously, the child was betrayed right. and his family, and that's very serious. But the whole church was betrayed by the actions of that person. Huh, I think yeah. sometimes there are people who feel betrayed uh, on occasion by their country. Uh, and maybe they feel like maybe we fought a war that wasn't necessary. Not to get into the politics, but we feel betrayed and it affects us. But I remind people, if you read the story of Judas in the Bible, Judas went to the leaders the night before the Last Supper and Judas told him, said, hey, give me 30 pieces of silver, I'll betray him. And then Jesus, the next night, according to the Gospel of John, before they had the Lord's Supper, he washed the disciples' feet. And our Lord knew what Judas had done, but he still washed his feet. Yeah. Now, I remind people, he's Jesus, he's God, and we're not. And you may not get there the next day, but you want to get to the place. And this is forgiveness in my oh, you're right. If I, from what I feel the Bible teaches about forgiveness. Forgiveness is not that I forget what you've done. Forgiveness is not refusing to be in a position where you can hurt me again. Forgiveness is I give up my rights to revenge. So if I have the choice to either hurt you or serve you, I will choose to search you, not to reward you, but I don't wanna lash out trying to get even. In fact, in my book, I tell a story of a lady who was brutally betrayed by a serial rapist. You may uh -huh. remember the you remember the movie Dead Man Walking? Yeah. Uh, that was a story about a, a serial rapist murderer from Louisiana named Robert Lee Willie. And the only person that he kidnapped, raped, and did not kill was a young lady named Debbie Morris. And she wrote a wonderful book about that as well. But she talked about how that you have all of this feeling of anger and not knowing what to do. And when he was executed, wow, now I'm going to be happy. And she relates that his execution, which was carried out, did not bring her the happiness. And I use that story to illustrate how we think, boy, if I can make you hurt, why you will be, you know, then once we even the score, I'll be happy. But what I help people with betrayal is it's not about them. It's about you. And even though they wound you and they hurt you, you can get beyond it, and you can once again live life to the fullest. 
Well, I encourage everyone, especially if you have been betrayed, to get Phil's book. How can they get it? Well, it's available at, at any place you get books. Uh, Amazon, uh, of course, has it. Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, any place like that where you get books, you'll see it. There's going to be a lot of uh, people talking about it, and you can just find it at any bookstore, or they can order it for you. You can order it online. It's called Beyond Betrayal. By Phil Waldrop, W-A-L-D-R-E-P. And I'll put the uh, link in the show notes. Good. Thank you, Phil. Well, thank you, Mark. Always great to talk to you. I love you, buddy. Love you too, man. Hey, we're back, y'all. I don't know if there's if you have any static. Hi, hey, hey, we're, we're on we're on the air. You're on the air. Uh, this is Colleen's mother. She thought she thought we were electrocuted. Cause she couldn't, I couldn't get, a, get it. I couldn't get it to come back on. You couldn't. No. Well, it is. We're back on, it's, and there's like on. how many people? Seven hundred and fifty-six people all over from all different platforms okay. watching us. I need a new there iPad. There is static, though. Y'all hear that static? I hate that. That could be. Well, okay. We're but, alive. We're alive. We'll okay, call you after this over. All right. <laughs> well, y'all, I wanted to sing for you. Next week is a uh, week at Mark Lowry. What's what? Danny Phillips sent me something. What'd she say? This is my Mark Lowry proof cup. I don't get it. Oh, oh but your spill proof cup. Oh, a you... spill proof cup. Oh, that is my hysterical. Gosh. I love... Hold on, let me show you this to y'all. Oh, Danny Phillips, gosh. she's so fast. Next week at marklowry.com. <laughs> <laughs> that is a sippy cup. It's a sippy cup. Wait, oh, let me pull this that's up. That's hilarious. I love that we can just do this instantly. Where uh, is it? Where's my. Wait, hold on, y'all. You ain't got nothing to do, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Here, y'all. Oh, is this it? Danny, here it is. Okay, y'all, look this at this. This is my Mark Lowry. This is my Mark Lowry proof cup. cup. Oh, that's funny. Thank you, Danny. How much are they going to sell for? $29.95? Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. This is a song, y'all, that I wrote years ago. And I don't know if this is going to work or not, but <clears throat> uh, without too much static. But uh, it's called, uh, I heard an old preacher, B.R. Lakin. He uh, came to our church. I'm going to get rid of my gum. Came to our church and uh, was preaching. And, and he said the line, I don't know what a sinner you are, but I know what a savior he is. And the songwriter in me wrote that. And this is uh, that song. Sometimes does it seem too good to be true that God's only son lived and died just for you? Is it hard to believe his love's really there when in spite of your sin he continues to care i don't know what a sinner you are but i know what a savior he is i don't know where your feet have carried you but his climb calvary's hill I don't know what kind of words you've spoken, but his words were, Father, forgive. I don't know what a sinner you are, but I know what a Savior he is. Sometimes does it seem You've wandered so far You'll never get back to your place in his heart Don't you know he waits for the sound of your prayer Just whisper his name and you'll find that he's there I don't know what a sinner you are But I know what a savior he is 
I don't know where your feet have carried you, but his climb Calvary's hill. I don't know what kind of words you've spoken, but his words were, Father, forgive. I don't know what a sinner you are, but I know what a Savior he is. I don't know what kind of words you've spoken, but his words were, Father, forgive. I don't know what a sinner you are, but I know what a Savior he is. I know what a Savior he is. Oh, I know what a Savior he is. pretty one yes. the Lord gave me and Claire Cloninger she went home to be with the Lord and then Lynn Kiesecker wrote the music I, I wrote the I wrote the chorus and I couldn't come up with any verses and and Claire wrote the verses and I loved them Beautiful. well oh 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 y'all I went to a Bible study this week walked in and there was nothing but every man in there was older than me and I've, I've looked for something like this. But I ran into this fella, Ray Baker, I think is his name, friend of Bubba's, and he told me he has this Bible study at the YMCA. He's only been a member of it a few years. But it goes, uh, it's been going 20 years. Oh, wow. And what, some of the original guys are still in there. So I, I'm in there and nobody, I walk in, and there's just a long table in this room called a chapel at the YMCA. And... Uh, all of them are sitting around the table. And I got there early because I want to make sure I found it. And uh, there's just a few when I got there. So it filled up before, before it was got started. And this one old man, wait, I hear a, wait a second. Hello, hello, hello. Well, that side's real loud. Okay, anyway, this one old man, he didn't say nothing. Oh, before, the first one I walked in, they looked at me and I promise you, they nobody there said, oh, there's Mark Lowry or any of that. No one, I don't think, recognized me at all. and But they did look at me and say, do you play the piano? And I, <laughs> I said, well, I've never played it in public. And and uh, they said, well, our piano player just left. Could Can you just play something? So I went over and chorded out Amazing Grace. And they <laughs> sang, and they thought I was incredible. Oh, that's funny. They, they said, we won't know if you're any good or not. Well, yeah. that's... <laughs> you know how to play. Yeah. Well, I chorded around a little. And so, uh, but it was great. Okay, another thing I thought we would talk about is, okay, I was on the YouTube today and I came across these guys, colorblind glasses. I've never been colorblind, but if you've been colorblind, I can't imagine how horrible that would be, not be able to see colors, mm -hmm. like those pretty green glasses and that mm -hmm. nice uh, orange jacket. You know, I'm thankful I'm not, no. I'm thankful I'm not colorblind. But a lot of people are. And it just, it when they put the glasses on and they see the colors for the first time that they've never seen, mm. it I start tearing up. Because it reminded me when we get to heaven and we're going to see colors we have never seen before. Mm. It, I started thinking that's just the way it's going to be when we get to heaven. We're gonna see things we have never even imagined. Because it says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God has prepared for those who love him. Didn't even say you had to memorize the Bible, just said you gotta love him. Mm -hmm. Didn't say you had to go to Bible college, you just gotta love him. And what's not to love? He's so good and kind. So, anyway. We're going to New York City, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like we lost everybody. Look at there. We're down to seven. That can't be right. Well, anyway, we're going to New York City. Pray for us. Colleen's going. Uh, Dina's going, Lord willing. Bubba's going. Uh, many of you are going. Philip, I wish you were going. I know. I wish I was. 
Oh my goodness, no. we're gonna have so much fun. Lord, we gotta pack some warm clothes. Is too. it cold up there? Well, yeah, colder than here for sure. So we we'll have to take a lot of coats and boots and uh, <laughs> different type of attire that In we this nice we Mar have here. Well, you know. Mary Dean says she enjoys our sing-along. She enjoys listening to me and Colleen tell our tales about our week. Mm -hmm. God keep us. Thank you, Mary Dean. Is, do y'all hear that static? Or is it just coming through my headphones? I think it must be that. I hope it is. I can go get me another one of these mixers. Or maybe it'll just dry out. Yeah. Maybe. Wouldn't that be maybe nice? so. Well, what else? Anything? I hate I to say bye. Because... Oh, next week we're off. Yeah, that's we're, right. We're not going to do nothing because we're all going to be in New York and we don't know if we'll be able to do it. Yeah, let's do it. Bro. Oh, yeah. So we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Make sure you buy your shirt. And if you go use Val Day, remember, over at MarkLowry.com for this entire week, the first 25 people to use the promo code Val Day will receive 50% off their order. Oh, am I mute? Look at there. What? Hello? Oh, yeah, okay, there you go. Hey, y'all, we're back, okay. Let's sing. You'll know this one. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious.
I really do. And you know, I'm not as uptight when it's just the three of us. Mm -hmm. I know you've got all that other stuff going. I know, when it's all those other people. I get all nervous because they've all come out. <laughs> but it was just you, Colleen, Philip, and me. Just you at home right there. So you, when I point, it looks like I'm pointing right at you. You know God's crazy about you, don't you? Well, he is. Anybody love you enough to die for you is on your side. So y'all, hang in there, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. And thank you, Phil Waldrop. Let me show you his book. You need to get this book, Beyond Betrayal. If you've been betrayed, you can get past it. You know, you don't have to be bitter. I remember one time, there's this fella at Liberty Baptist College when I was there. He was mad at Jerry Falwell. And every time you got around him, he would gripe about Jerry Falwell. One day I said, you know how much sleep Jerry Falwell's lost over you being mad at him? None. I said, you're gonna have to get over that. I don't think you ever did, but Jerry Falwell didn't lose any sleep. I don't think Jerry Falwell even knew he's mad at him. So listen, be careful who you're mad at. They may not even care. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. Good night. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Mondays with Mark. We'll see you next Monday night, 7 p.m. Central, right here, wherever you saw our program. YouTube, be sure and like us and ring the bell. Facebook, please share our program. And we will see you next Monday night, 7 p.m. Central, for another Mondays with Mark.